Okay, so I've had a lot of students asking me about the flower pot problem, probably because I said that there would be uh, a problem very similar to it on the test. So it's a kinematics question, and it's just a little different than most of the ones you see. In this question, I want you to imagine that there's a flower pot being dropped from some unknown height. It doesn't really matter what you drop, but it's a thing, it's falling. And rather than just set up a camera or look or something like that, you decide you were going to set up two photo gates. And you time how much time it takes this flower pot to fall past your window. Now, obviously, the higher you drop it from this height, the shorter that time. And it's also going to depend on the uh, height of the, the window here. Now, after I show this to you, there's going to be a Desmos here where you can vary the height of the window and the time to pass the window. And even if you want to put it on a different planet, you can change G and click on this arrow and it will give you the answer. But let's, let's go through this. The problem you get is not likely to be exactly this, but the concept is you have two regions of motion here. From when the flower pot falls to the hits the top of the window and from the top of the window to the bottom of the window. So let's label these A, B, and C because that's, that's useful. The thing to recognize is that for the segment of motion BC, that initial velocity is the same as the final velocity from A to B. So this B links those two together. Now, what I would do in this version of the question, not that this will always be the formula you use, but here I would use the fact that um, the displacement between B and C, better known as the height of the window, is equal to the initial velocity there, which is the velocity at point B, times the time to pass the window, minus one-half G T squared, because that's the acceleration. Remember, G is just a magnitude 9.8 meters per second squared. Uh, in fact, let's make this positive, because we're just taking down to be positive here. So we can use this and we can rearrange this and actually solve for VI. That's what makes this so challenging for students. They're not used to solving for VI or the velocity at, at point B. And what that's going to give us is the displacement between B and C minus one-half GT squared divided by T. And that is going to give us the velocity at B. That will give us a, a, a number. Now the thing to realize is that velocity at point B is the same as the final velocity at point A. So now that we know a number for this, or at least we will when we plug the numbers in, now that is going to be the final velocity here. So then to get the H, what we can do is we can do final velocity or velocity at point B squared is going to be equal to the initial velocity, the velocity at point A which, because we're dropping it, will be 0, uh, plus 2 times the acceleration g times that distance, which is the height we want to know. So if I rearrange this, I can actually solve for that height. That's going to be vb squared minus the a, which is going to be 0 squared, divided by 2g. And that will actually give us the, um, the height there. So the key is that this velocity, let's just use a different color here, is the same as the velocity here. That's what, what links them. So now when you plug in those numbers, let me show you what you're going to get on the, the Desmos here. If you just click this arrow, it'll show you the answers. So when you plug in the numbers, you should get this number 9.265 for the speed as it gets to the top of the window and then the distance from here to here so from the top of the window to wherever it was dropped from is this now I did draw it so it exactly matches so if you're doing this and you don't want to see what it looks like just unclick this and you won't see it if you want to try it and make sure you can do this with different numbers you can you can do this change the time for the window or the height now, strong word of caution, I don't want you just memorizing these particular formulas or even this exact method, because the problem you're likely to see is not exactly this. The information you know might be different. I might know the height from here above the ground, 
and maybe give you this time. Well, you can figure out the total time and then subtract this time and um, that'll tell you the time to fall just to here and then subtract those two distances. Or I might give you, for example, this height and this time, but not give you the height of the window and you have to solve for that. So in physics, the danger is trying to memorize all the equations for a very specific problem and really you wanna use um, the relationships here. But breaking it into two pieces is a really important strategy. So I will link this uh, Desmos or a very similar one in the description and you can use that if you just wanna practice with this one very specific kind of flower pot problem. You can go ahead and do that.